All right, so now the look at the get home bag, right? Hopefully y'all saw my uh, truck kit video where we looked at all kinds of tools and tricks and techniques to make sure I had every opportunity to self rescue and or repair my vehicle and get home in my vehicle. But owing to uh, Murphy and uh, life in general, not always going the way we plan, I also have to plan for being able to get home on foot. And obvious stuff out of the way, boots. Got these good old pair of Merrells. I rotate boots through, so I'm, I'm wearing some. Some are stashed in the truck and I rotate them, keep them broke in, keep my feet used to them. Great pair of boots, seen a lot of miles. Already got a pair of good hiking socks stashed in there with them, All right? Got to take care of the feet. Then comes gloves. All right. I'm not leaving all these danglies on my kit. Got a good pair of mechanics gloves. If I'm not gonna put them on right away, I'm at least gonna put them on my belt so I know I can protect my hands. And then real quick, as I'm outfitting, I will go up here and grab up my Wileys, which is basically a good pair of ballistic grade tough glasses that the lenses are replaceable. All right, and I've got the spares inside, I'll show you in a second, to make them sunglasses, but gotta protect the eyes, right? So protecting the eyes, protecting the feet, protecting the hands, I wanna hit that real quick. I have a rule of twos, right? I've only got two eyes, two hands, and two feet. So a big portion of any kit I'm putting together is gonna ensure that I keep my feet and hands and eyes intact. You lose any one of those and you are in the hurt package for sure. So good eye protection, foot protection, the mechanics gloves I already put on, gotta have it. I still have a couple more though that I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna close this up for a second because I don't need any more out of there right away as I'm just getting outfitted for the journey, right? Not even on it yet. I'm gonna pull out my Cold Steel SRK. It's a great knife, did a bunch on it. You'll, if you go back and see my uh, first C of survivability, it's right all about cutting tools. you see more on this, great knife great knife for cutting through obstacles. And obviously if I'm having to get this gear on and go somewhere, especially through the bush, I wanna plus up with a great fixed blade knife like this and uh, ensure that I've got those other capabilities well in hand. Off to the side here, also a dangler, but it's coming off, is uh, light. And in my case, can't help myself, old school. I've got a good old fashioned mag light, right? Red lens already, got some extra tape on it, both for grip or if I had to clamp it in my teeth to use it, if I hadn't busted out my headlamp yet. But I love them, tough. Batteries last a long time, never let me down in the military, so my first go-to is gonna be that mag light that goes on my belt along with the knife. So now that we've done that, I'll continue around to the front real quick and show you one of the features, and this is a Camelback, right? Hydration pack. And whether it's Camelback or not, I love these features down here. All right, where I've got stowage right around my hip belt so I can get to it while I'm on the move. But I suppose I should get this out of the way too. I was talking knives. This is the NRS Pilot Survival Knife. Great blade, super tough, serrated, rope cutter, straight edge, bullet nose for prying, rubberized grips, glass breaker in the back. Love it, and I keep it strapped there to my shoulder strap. So with the sternum trap, strap attached and I'm wearing this, I've got that ability to reach up and grab that for quick work anytime at a moment's notice. So now, but anyways, back to the belt pack. Key feature of this is that I can get to this stuff on the move, right? And over this side, show you real quick, as expected, right? Little chapstick to keep the lips going, a couple of nut bars and a five hour energy to keep the body going. And you gotta have at least a couple snacks, even though the plan around this kit is that I'm gonna make it 10 mile or a 20 mile straight shot back home. Doesn't mean I don't need a little nutrition and a little water to get me through that journey. All right. This side, a little bit more on the utility, but first up, I've got this set. Compass for obvious reasons, especially if I have to go off road, but either way, it's my primary navigation, good old analog compass to get me point A to point B, and especially if I start going through the bush. All right, this little keeper bag is because all these shinies on my hand, these rings are coming off and they'll get stowed away. Back here in my kit, I'm keeping this as backup to my backups. All right, back up to my Leatherman. I don't know if Gerber still makes this, this Nautilus, but it is fantastic. I mean, the ergonomics are great. This blade is just wicked. Got even scissors in there and the other tools. Got this deployable little flashlight, all right? So I can get a little bit of light or a little bit of signal going with that. It's right there, ready to go. Love this thing, you know, can't say enough about it, but I'm gonna keep that as my backup to backup so that I've got that on hand 
down the road. Now just leave these guys over here, All right? So primary blade, backup blade, a little bit of chow to get me going and boosted, water to get through it, right? Navigation, as well as a little backup Camp Leatherman type tool, right? Now we'll go ahead and go around. So first up, I do have the hydration bladder full and my primary is gonna be to be sipping off this hydration bladder as I travel. But got to plan, you know, hope for the best, but plan for the worst, right? So let's just say I run out of that water and I still got a ways to go and I've got a, my eyes on a creek or a pond or somewhere where I can get water. So here goes this clean canteen with a few extras, which I'll point out here real quick. All right. Got it nicely secured in there. I also got a dummy corded in there. So I've got a pre-filter, right? Cotton bandana, some Ranger bands, keeping it on there. The idea being when I'm going to dip this clean canteen down in that, that water source, first I'm gonna cover the mouth with this pre-filter, the cotton canteen. Get all the big particulate matter not even in there you know get that out of the way the other thing i've got though is if you can see it there it's life straw life straw makes this cool kit that i got can't say enough about where you've got a filter and it comes with different mouth sizes so you can put them on different clean canteens or nalgene bottles right but there it is there's the water filter so now i put my pre-filter over the top dunk that in the water get my water secure this back and now when i'm popping this cap and drink it from here it's all coming through that filter and i'm getting clean water no chemicals, no boiling, no fuss. All right, but that gets me my backup to water. I'm keeping that dry for right now, but if, uh, <laughs> and they do, if things go wrong, then I can reach for this bad boy and real simply dunk it in water and get good clean water out of that. I'll go to the flip side before I get to the center pouch. Over on this side, again secured, got just a Bushnell monocular, right, which is also dummy corded. To the pack for right now but that's just a simple loop all right i can pass that through to uh, pass that back through and get it out so i can use it or keep it tied either way but um i mean i can't say enough this thing has really got excellent vision diopter adjusts to your eye magnification is out there way crazy i mean you know 16 by 52 whatever so it's you can reach out and look if i'm scouting trails if i'm scouting what trouble might be ahead still got to have some way to get some advance notice of what's down your path. So I can't emphasize enough having a little set of binos, binocular like this, something so you can scout ahead for sure. Tucked away there. All right, back to the center console. First thing up, all right, I pop away these keepers and this is my primary source of cover. All right. if, you've, uh, if you haven't, you can go see my third C of survivability on cover. Right. Cover is almost always looked at as some giant tarp that you're going to suspend between trees. Cover at the end of the day is whatever it is that keeps the elements off your body. All right? Keeps you dry, for instance. And these frog togs do a great job. Very lightweight, super waterproof, and it's both the pants and the top. So for me, hoofing it through, if I've got rain, I can put on this rain, this rain suit and keep on motoring. Not with a, with a poncho and it's flying everywhere and it doesn't cover your legs anyways. Then you end up with soaked legs. Either way, I swear by these guys. I've used them a bunch and they also provide a great barrier, uh, air barrier, if you will, for cold climates too. And especially sleety, rainy snow, that kind of thing. So can't emphasize that enough. Also quick and at hand, my foot kit plus some of the everydays, right? I mentioned the importance of my rule two, so I've got some visine there, in case I have to wash out my eyes because maybe there's something, whatever is irritating them. So after bite, some bug spray, because we are spring now moving into summer and bugs suck. So we're gonna have that on hand. Triple antibiotic, some towelettes, alcohol towelettes can be used to wash up or to wash out a wound or as a fire starter even. And then behind that, a little bit of band-aids and so forth because I do have another kit in there. But primarily visine for the eyes, some after bite and or bug spray triple antibiotic, and then the uh, alcohol wipes, which can be TP, fire starter, or just to clean things up a bit, right? But most importantly, moleskin. So that I can take, say, the scissors from that Gerber Nautilus tool, cut myself the pieces I need to take care of my feet, right? Rule of twos again. Got to take care of my feet. And even my old infantry feet are going to raise hot spots and maybe even a blister, depending on how hard I push on that 10 to 20 mile journey can't emphasize enough as far as first aid goes that's got to be like the number one if you're planning for a foot journey right 
All right, so that pretty much covers all that outside. We'll go back in from the top. First back where I got the Wileys out. All right, up here, got a backup set, all right? So this DeWalt set of safeties can use day or night, doesn't matter, but at least I've got a good backup and they're tough. So that gives me an extra for my eyes because I cannot, of all my rule of twos, to lose the use of one eye, bleh, I can't even imagine that scenario. So I'm gonna do everything I can to avoid it. Then coming in here, s beaner it's my first pull. If you've seen my second C, combustion of the 10 C's is fire building. Magnesium black, extra ranger bands, got the striker already there. Got it s beanered on here, but that would come off, go to my pocket, so I know it's now in my Lion 1 gear, and I'm plussed up on fire. Back behind that, back up to my compass, Garmin e 20. So now I've got the ability to plan routes and then navigate them, or at least pinpoint where I am. But I've also got maps on roads, as well as the topography around me for looking at alternate routes. Either way, it is a primary, oh, sorry, the backup to my compass, right? If I really get turned around and I gotta start over again and figure out where I am, then to pull this guy up. Otherwise, conserve the batteries, all right? So that goes sitting back in there. More on this side. Of course, gotta have a headlamp. Might have to make the journey at night. I don't recommend trying to make it through the bush at night unless you are well skilled and know where you're going and what you're doing. But certainly, if you're walking a road or trail, then you've got the uh, hands-free ability to put that light out there and see. Behind that, there's the dark shades that I can pop out and replace on the Wileys so as to make them sunglasses. Another little redundancy, but Fresno lens, right? Simple magnifier. Love these life sport guys because it's the toughest one I've seen so far. Make fire by the sun whenever I possibly can, right? And that'll go off into the pockets. Further down in there, and if you <laughs> and if you also saw my, uh, and if you didn't, please do and like and subscribe and all that good stuff. But second C combustion, right? This is a little mini version of my holy hand grenade of fire. It's a military track same tab and aluminum packet with a bic lighter, 100 mile an hour taped onto it. And this is what I like to think of as uh, fire by brute force. That tab's gonna burn in there from five to ten minutes. Give me a good hot flame, and uh, there's the lighter. Pull that thing apart, light that cube, put it down and just start putting sticks on it and then bigger sticks and, and you will have a fire. Brute force, fire. Holy hand grenade of fire. One of my favorites. But that pretty much takes care of that. So going in the main compartment, I'll do this since we were talking about the Mighty Foot Kit. First aid kit, of course. I think that's what I was saying, but this is not gonna be some trauma battle kit. No IFAC here. Do have a military bandage, old army, USGI type, SWAT T. Mostly for the idea of making a compression bandage around this military bandage. Not for necessarily, hopefully, not for using it as a tourniquet, but it has both purposes. Some more neosporin, neosporin spray, some sting and band-aid stuff, just as extras, right? Some pain relief, and then behind that, larger scale band-aids. You know, butterfly band-aids, a few other things, so as to uh, take care of some uh, more major cuts and things of that nature. But not a trauma kit, but a good woodland first aid kit for the kind of injuries you might sustain out there with that. Camo, right, and I've got some earbuds with it so I can keep my business to myself, but um, good old Eaton crank light. Keep this charged up once a month. I check this along with anything else that's batteries or water or food in my truck kit. But can hand crank it, can take it from, uh, take power from the sun, and basically it gives me weather and uh, short wave and knowledge of what's going on around me. If say, for instance, phones crapped out, things of that nature. All right, so gotta have that so I can stay aware of my surroundings in the bigger picture. Hank a 25 some feet of 550 cord goes without saying. And this is my battery bank, all right? I like this one from Goal Zero because it uses the rechargeable batteries either as a battery bank, and I can go ahead and use this cable to plug in, and if my phone's still working, keep it working. Or, say it's the mag light might have crapped out, or the Garmin, I can pull one of the double A's out and use those individually or in mass to plus up those other devices requiring batteries. So it gives me both. It's a brick for my phone, but it's also my replacement batteries for my flashlight and my Garmin and potentially anything else that might take batteries, right? So there's that. Now the rest of this is where 
like I said, you hope for the best, but you plan for the worst, right? My plan with this kid is to make a 10 mile journey straight through, 20 miles at tops, right? But I am confident in my capabilities that I can do that. But there's always the but. Murphy strikes. And whether it's injury or just the circumstances and I can't make it, I've got a few items in there for the possibility that I might have to do this in an overnight in two journeys, right? First up is this easy one. Got to concede if I'm actually going to put a second day into it. I've got a good old MRE, an MRE heater, so I can at least get one good big meal in me to plus up for the final leg of the journey. Right. I've got this kit, no waterproof bag. Love these gecko dry bags. Got to get you some if you can. The clasps are real great. The bags are real great. A pair of socks, wool, a little bit plussed up for warmth. Right? This is on the outside chance that if I did have to stop, whether it's because all day in the 90 degree heat, I'm hot and sweaty, now it goes down to 60 degrees that night. Well, that can render you hypothermic if you're not careful. So beyond the warm and fuzzy foot gear, I keep these Columbia Omnitex in here, right? Omni heat, sorry. So Omni heat, right? By Columbia. And what these are is long johns, top and bottom that have this lining that is similar to a space blanket gonna reflect your body's heat. This will plus you up by 20 degrees, if not more, who knows. But, like I say, long and hot, sweaty day, don't be deceived. Even 10, 20 degrees for sure, you can start getting yourself into a danger close for hypothermia. So I have those to be able to plus up and warm up. And frankly, there's no other cover in here. Like I said, the frog's togs, right? Cover doesn't have to be a tarp suspended in the trees. Cover is just whatever keeps the water off. And in this case, for me, it's gonna be these frog's togs. And if it's cool, I add that Columbia layer, the Omni heat, then I put on the frog's togs. Now I've got triple layer, real powerful insulation. And if it rains, big deal. It wouldn't be the first time where I just had to curl up under a tree and deal with it. And that's what you gotta do, right? I'm trying to travel light. Don't wanna freeze at night though. So got this kit on hand. And uh, in parallel with that, Got this one other little dry bag, simple Coleman here, but it's both for hot and cold. First off, again, if I've said, okay, that's it, and I am gonna have to hang overnight, well, spring and summertime, bugs, right? And I don't have to suffer anymore, so head net. Drive on rag, do rag, however you wanna call it. Could be extra bandage, could be a sling, could be used to help with a pressure wound, uh, pressure bandage, things of that nature, but certainly to cover my head. And with that, also a boonie cap. Hot summer days like today, I want to keep the sun off my ears and neck best I can. So baseball cap ain't making it. I'm gonna go ahead and throw on a boonie cap. And similar to having the Columbia's on hand, if I've acquiesced for the day and settled in for a nasty night, then I also am gonna have this beaner. That along with the Columbia's and the wool socks, throw the frog togs over that. And that is as good as a micro environment as I'm gonna need. I. Yeah, would definitely say here in the summertime, right? So that kind of runs all that down, all in a nice camelback. So got the hydration, got back up with the clean canteen and the life straw filter and placement. Got the uh, the uh, binocular for looking ahead and scouting. Got radio for being able to reach out and hear what's going on in the world. Lots of backups after that. But that's my short range get home bag, right? And I'm definitely gonna do a longer range or a intentional long stay bag for say a four to seven day journey coming up next. So more to follow.